now. So just a heads up and move on to the next slide. So by the end of this session of this workshop, uh, you should be able to create an announcement using the content editor, um, as well as use the email feature to contact students within Blackboard. So Lydia will be discussing those two points, post, manage, and grade discussion forms and thread, threads, which Zorka will be discussing, access and grade an assignment using inline grading features, which I will be discussing, and then grade tests using grade by question and grade by attempt, and then also locating and updating student grades in the Grade Center, which Aisha will be discussing. So I'm going to pass it on to my colleague Lydia, and we can go from there. All right, thanks, Ronak. So hello, everyone. My name is Lydia, and I will be covering the Communicating with Students section of today's workshop. So this section, we're going to cover three really important tools. The first one is to move on to the Announcements tool. And then lastly, we're gonna finish with the email tool. So first off, I'm gonna give you a brief overview of the content editor. So essentially this tool allows you to input a variety of different types of information within different areas of Blackboard. So it's actually not unique to any specific location within your Blackboard course site. You can really find it wherever a block of text may be created. So a couple of very interesting things we can do using the, the editor are we can add and format text. We can also insert or remove links and hyperlinks. We can attach files and media. And lastly, we can also embed media. So I think it's a little advanced for today's workshop, but I'm just mentioning that that's an option here. I won't be covering that in detail. All right, so now I'm just gonna give you an idea of the general location of a couple of these functions. So if I could just direct your attention to the image on the left-hand side of the slide, we're going to start with the first row starting from the left. So I'm sure you recognize a couple of these just from using Microsoft Word. We have some formatting options here. So we have bold, we have italics, underline. We can also change the font type, the font size. We can create numbered lists, bulleted lists. So down the row, we can also change the font color. We can highlight. Now I'm going to focus a little bit on this little icon on the right where you see a little picture of an eraser in it. So we can use this to remove excess formatting from text when we bring it in from Word. So we often recommend if you're creating a really large body of text to first create it in Microsoft Word and then to paste it into the content editor in Blackboard. So the reason we recommend this is if Blackboard times out, we don't want you losing all your hard work. So in this case, when you copy it over from Word, you would just highlight it and then click on this little icon here, and it would remove any excess formatting that comes through that you don't want. All right, so moving on to the second row now, let's start on the left once more. We have shortcuts to the cut, copy, and paste functions. Uh, we also have a couple of alignment options, so left, right, and center. Moving down the row, we can see we have that little icon with two links and then the one next to it with a broken link. So these are the ones you would use to both insert and, and then let's move, out, move down to the third row now. So starting on the left, we can attach a file with a little paperclip icon there. And then we can also insert an image right next to it. And then the, one, the third one to the right is inserting media. So how these three work are you can insert both directly from your device or you can insert files directly from Blackboard. So let's say you already uploaded a picture or a video into your Blackboard content collection. You can also access those directly from these little icons. All right, so the last tool I'm gonna to be going over is the mashups tool. So I'm sure you can see on the image, there's a little bar with the word mashups in it in the third row. So this tool allows you to bring in media from three specific sites. So currently we can bring in images from Flickr, videos from YouTube, and presentations from SlideShare. So if you wanted media from any of these specific sites, you could use this mashups tool to do so. All right, so moving on, I'm gonna go over the announcements tool briefly. So the announcements tool essentially allows you to reach all course users at the same time and convey some information. So there's a couple of different cases in which this tool might be very useful to you. Let's say you have an assignment or a project and you've changed the due date you could use this tool to effectively tell all the students at the same time. You can also let them know that perhaps you've made a 
change to the syllabus or you've made corrections or clarifications to course material. This is also a very effective way all course users know at the same time. Say you've made a change to the exam schedule or you've changed the office hours. This is also a really great way to let everyone know. So as you can see in the image on the left, you can actually find this tool in the course menu, that little black bar on the left hand side. And I will actually be going over how to do so in detail in a quick demo in just a few minutes. So bear with me. All right, so now I'm just gonna do the email tool real quick. So the email tool essentially allows you to compose and send emails to course users without ever really leaving your Blackboard course site. So the important thing to note here is that the email tool in Blackboard doesn't actually store the emails, it stores the email addresses. So let's say you're contacting a student, you're sending them an email, and that student's email address links to Outlook, they will actually receive that email in their external Outlook inbox. So they're not able to view or receive the email within Blackboard, they will actually receive it in Outlook. Also, you can see in the image on the left hand side, you have quite a few options here with regards to who you can send the email to. So your recipient can be all users, all groups, all TAs. You can also uh, send emails to specific or single users. So we'll be exploring that a little more in the demo in a couple of minutes. And also lastly, another option you have is you can send a copy of the email to the sender, which would be yourself. So if that's something that would be of interest to you, that's also something you can do. Okay, so now we have a quick activity for you where you're going to be comparing the email and announcement tools case by case. So essentially how this is going to work is I'm going to read out each scenario one by one. And then after each one, I'm going to send out a quick poll and you're going to have the opportunity to reply either email or announcement. So whichever one you think would be an easier way or the best way to contact the individuals within the case. So just give me a quick second here. So let's start with the first scenario. The first scenario is you are going to be having a joint class with another section for a guest speaker today using Teams. So I've sent out the poll now. So you should be able to reply either email or announcement. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to do so. All right, looks like most people have answered it and most of you got it correct, congratulations. The correct answer for this one was the announcement tool. So because you're trying to reach the entire course at the same time, all course users, the effective way to do so would be using the announcement tool. All right, so the second scenario is one of the groups has yet to submit the proposal for an upcoming assignment. So how would you reach this group? I've updated the poll now, so if you could just update your end. Perfect. All right, it looks like most of you also got the correct answer here. That's amazing, guys. Okay, so the correct answer was the email tool. So because you're trying to reach a specific group, the tool which would give you the option to do so would be the email tool. All right, moving on to the third scenario. So the third scenario is due to a change in your schedule, your office hours are moved for the week. So I've updated the poll once more. I'll just give you a couple seconds to update your answer as well. All right, perfect. Looks like everyone's getting the correct answer here. So the correct answer for this one was the announcement tool. So I've also pointed this out earlier. If you've changed your office hours, this is a really great way of communicating that to everyone at the exact same time. All right, so the fourth scenario here is you're requesting to have a meeting with a student for remedial support around course concepts. So I've updated the poll, so take a couple of seconds to answer that. All right, it looks like everyone's getting the correct answer. Okay, so the correct answer for this one was the email tool. So you're trying to reach an individual user. So the only way you could do that would be to use this tool here. All right, so the last scenario is you want to share some observations about student engagement during labs with the instructor and other GAs, TAs. 
So I've sent out the last poll now. I'll just give you a couple of seconds to answer it. Okay, it looks like mostly everyone has answered. So the answer to the last scenario was the email tool once more. So because you're trying to send information to specifically the instructors or GAs and TAs, you have this option using the email tool. All right, perfect. So now moving on, you are now gonna watch me as I use the content editor, create an announcement and also send an email within my Blackboard course site. So just give me a second to share my screen. All right, you should be able to see my screen now. So we're in my course sandbox here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to the corner and I'm gonna check that my edit mode is on. So if this is off, you're actually unable to create or edit any content within the site. So it's really important that we have this on. All right, so the first thing here is how to create an announcement. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move over to the course menu here on the left-hand side, then we're gonna select announcements. So once I'm on this page, I'm gonna select create announcement. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna enter a subject line. So just to keep it simple, I'm gonna enter updated office hours. And then here, I'm sure you recognize this tool now. This is the content editor. We're gonna use this to create a quick message. So I'm just, I'm just gonna say, new hours are. And just to show you some of the formatting options, I'm gonna underline it. I'm gonna put it in italics. All right, so below here, we have some web announcement options. So we can make this announcement date restricted. That means is the announcement would all only be visible during a certain time frame. So I could set it to be visible, let's say from right now till tomorrow at 1 p.m., for example. But just to keep it simple, I'm gonna keep the default option, which is not date restricted. Now below here, we have the option to send a copy of this announcement immediately, meaning if I check this off, then a notification will be to all students via email. So I'm just gonna keep this off for now. And then lastly, we have the option to link this announcement within the course. So let's say for example, my announcement has something to do with course notes and I have this content area here, I could link this announcement directly within this content area. So just to keep it simple, I'm gonna skip over that for now and I'm gonna click submit. And as you can see, we have a little banner up here telling us that it's been successfully submitted. And now I'm just gonna quickly show you how to reorder these announcements. So let's say I don't like the order they're in and I wanna reorder them. I would do that by hovering over here on the left, click on this purple bar, and then I'm gonna manually drag it. So that's how you reorder them. And then one more thing, if let's say you wanna edit the subject line or even the message within, you can go over to this little gray chevron here next to the title and click edit, and it takes us back to this announcement page where we had all the settings we visited. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to send an email. So we're gonna go back to the course menu on the left-hand side, and this time I'm gonna select email. So here, as you saw in the image earlier, we have quite a few options with regards to who to send to. To keep it simple, I'm gonna select single or select users, it take me to this page. Now here, we're gonna select who we wanna send it to under available to select. And then we're gonna use the right hand arrow to move it into this selected menu. And I can go back and forth here. You can also use invert selection. Let's say this is selected currently and I wanna deselect. This will do it for me or reselect. Now moving below, we're gonna put in a subject line. So this is very important. If you don't have a subject line, there's a chance the email won't actually send. So it's very important that you put a subject line in. So I'm just gonna pick updated office hours again, and I'm gonna enter the same message. New hours are, and I'm gonna show you a couple other formatting options. So we're gonna make it bold this time, and we're gonna highlight. Now moving down, this is what I mentioned earlier. We have the option to send a copy of this to the sender myself. I'm just gonna check this off. And then lastly, we also have the option to attach a file. So just to keep it simple, I'm gonna skip over this for now, but just keep in mind that this is an option. All right, so now we're gonna submit. 
So now we've sent an email, we received the same banner up here telling us it's been sent and that's it. So now I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint presentation, stop sharing the screen. And now it is your turn. So we've created some activities just to reinforce the concepts we present. And during this time, you will be completing activity 1A and 1B. So we'll give you around five minutes to do so. So we should see you back here at around 125. So if you navigate to your GATA sandbox, you'll find both the tools to complete the activities as well as, well as the activities themselves. So if you could just do so. And then once you finish, just come back here and raise your hand just to let the team know, that'd be great. And as usual, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat and someone from the team will answer them. So see you back here at around 125.
Okay, so the time is 125 and I'll have you all bring your attention back to the workshop. So it's completely okay if you didn't finish, you will have time after the workshop to come back to the exercise worksheets and finish whatever you didn't. Also, just a friendly reminder, if you do have any questions during this part of the presentation, uh, please post them in the chat and someone from the team will be quick to respond, okay? So now to continue where Lydia left off, um, I wanna start by mentioning that there are a variety of assessment features that Blackboard provides and to really support and assess student achievement throughout your course. So when you're choosing an assessment, it's important to kind of consider the course learning outcomes. And today we're going to review um, the three most common assessments that are used. So I will be going over discussion boards, then RONAC will cover assignments, and finally Aisha will end the workshop with tests. Okay, so one great tool to help when communicating with your students are discussion forums. And these discussion forums kind of build a sense of community by uh, providing your students the opportunity to share their thoughts and ideas about class material. So they're honestly like a great avenue for participation and they can also be used for students to introduce themselves, um, to respond to questions, to reply to others, or even lead a discussion. Also, it kind of gives students a voice and the time to kind of reflect on what they want to say and read other responses and perspectives. So for example, discussion boards can be used for students to introduce themselves so that you can get to know them better. Um, they can also be graded as a part of course assessment as well, which I will demonstrate to you uh, later on in this presentation. So. One great practice for discussion forums is allowing your students to subscribe for alerts. So when subscription is enabled, um, Blackboard uh, sends out email alerts whenever a new post or reply to an existing post occurred. So this really serves as kind of like a great uh, reminder for students to kind of engage with responses. And then another great practice is creating discussion topics um, that are designated for general course questions that students may have. So this allows you to efficiently address the same questions that several students um, within the course may have. And it kind of gives your students the opportunity to help one another um, by addressing questions, even themselves. Okay, so now moving on, here I will discuss uh, the features that are available to the instructor uh, GATA role and how to use the tool throughout the life cycle of discussions. So from creating forums and threads to grading them. Okay, so let me just access my pointer here. So first, as you go over some important settings to be mindful of when creating a forum, here in the top left corner, uh, the forum availability section. This allows you to set up the visibility of the forum to students. So by selecting yes, um, you allow students to access the forums. And then right below here, you can um, use the date and time pickers to kind of limit the forum availability to a specific date range. But um, please note that if a display until date is set, students will no longer have access to the form contents after this date. And then now the following settings are kind of divided into groups. So the uh, view uh, threads reply section, this kind of determines how students view threads within the forum. So if you do choose your standard view, your students will be able to view all threads and replies that have been posted in the forum. But if you select the second option, um, this will prevent students from seeing other student posts until they create a post of their own. So please keep in mind that if this option is selected, uh, this will also disable anonymous posts and also the ability for students to kind of edit or delete their own posts. Okay, and then moving on into the uh, grading section, you can decide whether the form is going to have grading or no grading. So if you do select, if you do decide to assign a grade for the discussion forum, you will need to enter um, a total points possible in the space provided, okay? And this will create like an automatic grade column in your discussion forum. And then here in the subscription section, so by selecting allow members to subscribe um, to forum, students can then subscribe to the forum so that they know when people have posted. So I find this to be generally good practice so that students will know when to come back in. Uh, you can also have them subscribe to threads, 
but if you don't think it's necessary for them to subscribe to the full forum, perhaps you just want them to subscribe to a thread that they started, for example, um, this can serve as good practice if you want your students to create like a, like a dialogue amongst themselves. Um, or you can just say no subscription and just trust that students will come back into the actual um, discussion forum. And then in the create and edit section, uh, you can allow for uh, file attachments. Um, so this is good if you want, for example, to have students upload presentations, uh, be that a PowerPoint, um, PDF, infographics, whatever it may be, depending on what the particular discussion form is for. And then under the additional option section, um, you can allow for members to rate posts. So this can really serve kind of like as a quick feedback mechanism for students rating them on how well they're responding or posting uh, original content, for example. So now to kind of quickly summarize all this to give you um, a better picture of how it works. So you start with the discussion board course tool located in the course menu. And then the main discussion page uh, board page will then display like a list of forums. So a forum is like an area where the students can discuss a topic or a group of related topics. So then within each forum, the students can create multiple threads. And what I mean by multiple thread is that it will include like the uh, initial post and all the replies to it. So the replies are kind of nested in there and uh, students can rep reply to reply as well as reply to the initial post. So hopefully that kind of gives you a better picture of it all. And I'll give you a second here to kind of digest all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm going to jump into explaining uh, how you can grade a forum. So it's important to kind of note that you will need to select the grading options yours, um, in your settings when creating a forum, as just explained. Um, so by enabling discussion grading, um, this evaluation not only lets your students know how they performed, but it can really shape the improvement of future interactions. So you can assign grades based on student uh, participation um, on the of their post or even a combination of the two. And then discussion board rubrics um, can be created for easier grading. If you associated a rubric for this forum, expand and complete the rubric. Um, in the grading sidebar, you can also type in a grade. Um, optionally, you can type in feedback for the student. Then in the add notes section, um, you can add notes that are that only appear to you, the instructor or GATA. And then finally, you can re reply to the discussion thread. Um, this is public for everyone with access to that thread. And please keep in mind that your feedback should be formative. Um, now that you have kind of like this general idea of how discussion boards kind of work, um, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a discussion forum, uh, post, subscribe, and create it. So let me just navigate to my Blackboard here. <clears throat> okay. So you are going to enter your Sandbox Blackboard site and please, please make sure that your edit mode is turned on. It's located in the upper right corner of each course area. And then with your edit mode on, now you can then easily manage your course content um, depending on the permissions even granted by the instructor. Um, the course discussion board can be accessed from a link in the course menu. It's located in the uh, left hand side of your course site right over here. So after clicking on the discussion board view, you will now see a screen labeled uh, discussion board. And then at the top of the page, click create forum to, button to create a new forum. So you'll now see um, a screen labeled create forum. So this section labeled to forum information allows you to enter a name and a description for the forum. So for this example, I will call this forum, tell me about yourself. And then for the description, I will have the students reply with their program and then their fave sports team. So obviously yours would be a lot more descriptive and while we're in, uh, this is just a quick example, okay? And then I will select yes for availability. Um, I won't enter a date for display after, which will then just display the form once it's created, just so I can show you for today's demo, but I will enter a display until date. Let's just pick 30th of September. Um, now moving on to our form settings, I will keep it as a standard view. 
uh, for grade, I will select grade discussion forum and I'm going to assign a 10 as the total points possible. Now, not sure if you noticed, but when you select the option to grade a discussion forum, you will see three new options appear on the screen. So the first one here, show participants in needs grading. So you can check this option to show students in the grade center as needs grading after the student has made the specific number of postings. So keep it at one. Um, you can include a due date for the discussion forum if you like. Now, I didn't mention it earlier, but due date is the date and time when the assignment is due. So threads that students create submitted after the due date will be marked as late in the grade book. Um, they aren't required, but I find them to be helpful in managing course workflow and also deadlines. Um, you can add a rubric um, and I'll have one of my colleagues throw in a link to how to go about that. If you're interested in that feature, uh, please and thank you. And then I will allow students to subscribe to the forum and keep it as include link to post in the email. And then I will keep the following settings as is. Hit submit. Okay, so now the discussion forum has been created and it's visible to your student. So I will now show you what students see by entering the student preview. preview. So that's located in the top right corner of your course site and you're going to select this double arrow icon here. So now I'm in as a student and you'll know that by this orange banner up at the top. If you ever want to verify what your students see, this is exactly how you do it. Okay, so moving on, I will now navigate to the discussion board that we just created. Okay, and then the student will then create a thread to that forum by selecting create thread. And then in the subject area, I'm going to write about me and then answer the following questions that are listed in the forum description. So program engineering and then a sports team. Um, there we go. Also, they can attach a file if they like. And then once all that's done, hit submit. Oh, and also this is where students can subscribe to the forum. So now that your student has created a thread within your forum, I will now show you how the grading works. So first I'm going to exit the student preview and preserve all that data right over here. Keep the preview user and all data, continue. And then I'm going to navigate to my full grade center. Full grade center. And then you're going to hit the column that's associated with that discussion forum. Okay. And then you're going to uh, click on the gray chevron for that preview student. And then you can click grade the user activity. So as I explained earlier, you can leave a reply um, that is visible to those who have access to the thread. Assign a mark at a 10. I'll put an 8. Uh, leave a feedback to the learner. You can also open the full content editor as Lydia explained earlier by selecting this tool here. Um, you can also add your own private notes and when you're all done, hit submit. It's really that easy. So now that I have demonstrated all of that, uh, you can now turn to your exercise package and you will have uh, five minutes to complete activity 2A, which is uh, creating and posting and discussion boards and uh, 2B, which is grading discussions. Also, if you require any assistance, the team and I can pull you into a breakout room or answer any questions uh, in the chat for more help. So we can meet back at 1.43.
Alrighty, it is 1.43. If you guys can all come back to the session. Um, like Zorka said, if you don't finish your activity, that is 100% okay. You can always work on it after the session uh, at your own pace. But we are going to move on to um, assignments. So basically, assignments act as a Dropbox for students to submit files for grading online. So there's three types of assignments. There's individual, group, and portfolio. So the two that I would worry about the most as a GRTA is individual and group. Um, group, how it works is if the professor creates uh, groups within Blackboard, um, let's say there's a group project, um, you can create groups within Blackboard, and then you can have group submissions. So how that works is one student in that group would submit on behalf of the entire group. Portfolio um, isn't typically used. The only faculty that I know of that uses it is engineering. So if you are from the engineering faculty, um, definitely reach out to your professor to see what type of assignment they want to use. Um, but it's usually individual and or group. Um, attempts. So there are single attempt, multiple attempts, and unlimited attempts. So I will show you where you can access and change the amount of attempts. But oftentimes what happens is, let's say the professor creates the assignment and they only give the students one attempt to submit. And then down a couple days later, they say, you know what, I'm actually gonna give them a second attempt. Um, and they ask the TA or the GA to make that change. So where does that happen? I will show you when I share my screen, but you can definitely make uh, it multiple attempts and even give them like two or three chances or unlimited attempts. Um, safe assign. So safe assign provides information and not necessarily an answer. So what happens when a student submits their work, um, the system basically scans their, their file and goes through their file and tries to match it up against things that are publicly posted or by other people's assignments. So um, it will basically see where this information was pulled from and if it was plagiarized. And if it was plagiarized, um, how much of it was plagiarized. So it will basically give you a percentage. Um, and um, it depends on the project as well or the assignment. Um, if it's a project where it's, a, for example, a case study um, and they referenced a lot, then the safe assignment score would probably be higher. But if they referenced properly, then that should be OK. However, if you do see a safe assignment score that's higher than uh, usual, uh, definitely bring it up to the professor and see what they want you to do before reaching out to the student themselves. Delegated grading and anonymous grading. So these two options, um, I will show you where they are. Um, however, they are not recommended by the University of Windsor at all. Um, if your professor wants to do something like this, um, I encourage you, I recommend to reach out to the CTL team and we can help you find a way to do um, something similar and come out with the same outcome. So it's not recommended, but I will show you where it is because it is a part of the assignment options when you're first initially creating the assignment. Okay. Accessing the assignment. So you have created the assignment. Your students have submitted the assignment, um, hopefully on time. And now where do I go? How do I see their assignments? So that falls under what we call needs grading. So this acts as a collection of submissions that require review. So I will definitely show you where that is uh, once I start sharing my screen. And once you grade it and you provide the grade and you press submit, it disappears. And wh where does it go? So it falls into the full grade center. So the full grade center is basically a spreadsheet uh, for all student information and grades. So from the student IDs, from student numbers, from uh, their exams or discussion boards, anything that was graded within um, that course will all be accessed there from uh, past, um, from future, and whatever you're currently working on when it comes to grading. So grading the assignment. So how do I grade the assignment? So we have this new tool called BB Annotate. It's an inline grading tool that allows you to annotate directly on supported documents. So there's PDF, there's Word, there's PowerPoint, uh, digital images, um, image files, um, source codes. They have a lot of different uh, files that are compatible with BB Annotate. So this is where you can provide feedback for the learner. 
Um, this allows you, um, you can also provide written feedback, audio feedback, uh, video feedback, um, which will be, I'm going to turn my pointer on, um, which we, you can provide in this, if you look at the image, the slide that I am on right now, you can provide that here, which I will show you when I share my screen. Um, you can also uh, use a rubric. Um, so if I were to press this arrow um, and the rubric tool was associated with this assignment, then I could definitely use a rubric within Blackboard. However, it's not required or mandatory. Um, some professors, what they end up doing is they send the rubric to the TA um, externally, like a separate document, and they ask, the TA to use that instead, um, rather than having a built-in rubric within Blackboard, which is fine. Um, either way works, they're just options for you. And then this is also where you will see your safe assigned score um, or report, I guess. So if you look at this purple box on the screen, you can see here it says safe assign, and here it says 68% overall match. So if I were to click this, uh, basically a report would ha pull up with all this information um, and it, like I said, it's just information. It doesn't really provide an answer. It's, um, you have to basically infer what is going on with that information. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, so I am going to share my screen. I'm gonna create an assignment, um, show you the grading view, grade the assignment, and then submit the grade. So I'll show you how that process works. Just give me one sec here to share my screen. Uh, application, there we go. Perfect, so you should see my screen now. I am currently in my sandbox, in my personal sandbox. So I'm going to pretend that I'm the GA or TA of this course and um, I, the, the professor has asked me to create an assignment. So where do I go first? The first thing um, I'm going to do is go to the assignments tab. So if I click on the assignments tab, um, you can see I have already has a few assignments made. And one thing I wanted to mention is if you can see here at the top right corner, my edit mode is turned on. So I have access to this toolbar right here. However, if I turn it off, that is gone. So you have to always make sure it's on um, so that you can add and edit things in the site. So under assessments, I'm going to go to assignment. I'm going to name my assignment. So let's say I name my assignment one, personal analysis, um, and I want to provide instructions for the class. So there's two ways you can do this. Either I can type it here in content editor, or I can attach it down here. So let's say the professor sent you an email and said like, hey, like create an assignment. Um, here's the assignment. And they sent you a PDF file or a Word document. And um, you saved it to your computer, and you can attach it so that students will be able to download it and see what the assignment is through that. Or you can use the content editor and add the assignment instructions there. So I'm going to use the content editor. I'm going to paste in some instructions. So I have a couple questions for them. I told them that the assignment is due on Monday the 11th at 11.59. Late submissions will not be accepted. Um, and then I gave them a format of 12 point font times a Roman Word document and then max words of 750. So that's the assignment requirement. I'm going to scroll down and have a due date. So the due date here is the 11th at 11.59 p.m. Points possible. So here is where you can put how much the assignment is out of. So I'm going to grade this assignment out of 10 points. And this is where you can add a rubric. So this option of adding a rubric, if I hover over it, um, you can create a new rubric or create an exist or have an existing one and that the professor made earlier. Um, so definitely ask the professor and your grading team what you would prefer if you want to have a rubric associated directly within Blackboard or you just want to have an external one. It's definitely up to you and your grading team. It's not mandatory, um, but definitely something useful to uh, look into. Submission details. So this is where you can decide if it's an individual submission, a portfolio submission, or a group submission. So this Blackboard site that I'm using right now doesn't have any groups, it's going to leave it as individual submission. Number of attempts, so here is where you can change the number of attempts. So um, it comes automatically as single attempt, but you can change it. So let's say I click on multiple attempts and it says maximum attempts. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give them two options and I wanna see their last graded attempt. So this is the, the score 
um, that they will see. So if they submit a second copy, so let's say, for example, student um, submits their first copy early and they realize that there's a spelling mistake after they have submitted it. So they use their second attempt to fix their spelling mistake or, or gram, gram, grammatical error um, and resubmits. So I obviously want to grade the last one they submitted because that's probably the one that they want me to grade. When I grade that one, um, it's the last graded attempt that the student will see. So there's other options. There's highest grade, lowest grade, first uh, first graded attempt, which is the first one they would have sent in, um, or average of them both. So I'm going to click on the last graded attempt. Uh, plagiarism tools. So here is where you can enable safe assign and for that report to run. So I'm going to enable it for this assignment. And um, there's an option to allow the students to see the safe assign originality report. So this is a really good, um, I guess you could say like, like learning experience for the students. They can see their score and where the information was pulled from, but it, you don't necessarily have to turn it on for them. So I'm just going to leave it off for that for this uh, demonstration. Grading options. So this is where you can enable anonymous grading and enable delegate grading. So you can see in big bold letters it says does not recommend using this feature. So I would completely just disregard this section. Like I said, you can always reach out to CTL if the professor wants to do something like this, if they have like a few people, a, few, a big grading team, for example. Um, this is definitely something that we can help you with, um, but I would not enable these options at all. Just want to show you where those were. Display of grades. So how is the student going to see the grade? So it can be by score. So in this case, it would be like 8 out of 10 or 7 out of 10. Um, you can do by text, percentage, and then complete slash incomplete. And then there's also a secondary option where you can decide how you see it in the grade center only, which is for you and your grading team's eyes only. Um, you can include in grade center uh, grade calculations. Yes, you're going to want that. And then you want to show to students my, my grade. So once you submit their grade, they would see it automatically. Um, or you can uncheck this and then basically make the column in the grade center viewable at the end, where after you graded all of the assignments, then all of them can see it at once. So I'm just gonna leave it on, but Aisha will go through how you can make that change um, during her part. Going down the availability, so I'm going to have a display after and display until. This isn't necessary. Let's say I wanted to create this assignment for it to be available right now. I don't really have to put unlimited um, limited availability, for example, like a day after. Um, I would maybe want to have a display until. So let's say I want it to be displayed until the due date um, of the assignment so that the link disappears after the due date, um, which was it's at 11.59 p.m. is, is, the, um, is the time. Um, and then you have to make sure that this is turned on. So let's say if I unclick this, um, this the assignment will not be available for the students. So you have to make sure it's turned on, even if you have both uh, times available. So even if I click this and say, let's say I give them one week um, to work on this assignment. So I'll make it available um, today at 11.59 PM, and they have one week to work on it. Um, if I unclick this, these dates will not be honored. I have to make sure it's available for these dates to work. So just something to keep in mind, um, if you're trying to make it available right now, you don't necessarily need a display after unless you make it the time right now, um, which is 156. So if I typed in 156, then it would be available for the students. So just a couple things to keep in mind when creating the assignment. Um, but I'm gonna unclick these and I'm going to press submit. So if I scroll down, my assignment is right here. So if I this if I I would click on this and I can see the due date, I can see how much it's worth, and I can see the instructions. So now that this assignment's up, the students have submitted the assignment. Where do I go from here? What happens? How do I see the assignments? The question. So under your grade center, you're going to go under. So and it looked like this initially. So if you click on grade center and click on needs grading see assignments all posted here. So I'm going to grade the PESTLE assignment. I'm going to grade all users. So there's a little chevron, grade all users. 
and the assignment will pop up. Perfect, okay. So the assignment is here. This toolbar right here is the inline grading tool that we call BB Annotate. So that is what you're gonna to use to mark up the document, create comments, create text boxes, all of it. So um, a couple of things to keep in mind um, when it comes to drawing. So let's say I click on the drawing tool and I wanna grade this title page. And I said, oh, like, well done here, well done here, good job. And I want to delete something now. So there's two ways to delete. I can either click on the eraser tool and erase the check mark. Or if I unclick this, I can click on it and press delete on my keyboard and press okay. So you can see that it grouped these two annotations together. So what happens is when annotations are made close together, they end up getting grouped like this. So um, we don't, we're not too sure why this happens. We just think it's a, it's a bug in the system and hopefully uh, it'll be fixed soon. But if I were to press delete right now, it would delete. Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm getting a call. I'm gonna decline that. Sorry. Um, yeah, so if I were to press delete, um, it would delete both annotations. So I am going to um, erase one of them using my eraser tool, which is um, the recommended way. So I'm going to unclick um, that. So moving on to the next thing, we have images and stamps. So you can add images from your computer or you can even add a stamp. So if I click on stamps, you can see here, there is a bunch of stamps that are already pre-made um, that Blackboard um, has made, or you can customize your own stamp. So if I customize one and I typed in, you know, great work, exclamation mark, and I only want them to see the date and not the time. And I wanted to change the color to an orange yellow and I press create stamp, it will pop up. And I can drag, I can make it smaller, bigger. Um, it's useful. However, if I were to go back to my stamp, that stamp that I just created will not save. So some people think that it might pop up at the bottom and it doesn't. So if you plan on making custom stamps, um, you'll always have to make a new stamp each time. Um, or you can just use the ones that Blackboard provides. It, it's, it's up to you. Scrolling down the document, um, let's say I want to leave comments. So there's a comment bubble right here and I want to drop my comment here and I want to type in, you know, great work, exclamation mark, and I want to press comment. If I press enter on my keyboard, it will just tab. So it will not uh, post a comment. You have to press comment for it to post. So I'm going to press comment and it posted. So let's say I wanted to create another one and type in um, great work again and press comment. And then I see like, oh no, I spelled something wrong. I want to fix it. Um, there is no edit option. So the only way to get rid of it is to just press, press this little uh, garbage can icon for it to disappear. So are you sure you want to this comment? Okay. And then it's gone. So just a couple things uh, to keep in mind with that. Um, another thing with comment is let's say I um, do some formatting. So I put testing, tab, testing, tab, testing and I press comment, you can see those tabs were not honored. However, if I download this document, those tabs will be honored. So I'll show you in just a second. Another thing I wanted to mention, um, you, there's, it gives you an option to have a secondary comment within one comment bubble. So I could type here and say, um, looking forward to reading based comment. So it looks good. I have two comments within one comment bubble. Um, you can see it and it's great. However, once I download this document, which I'm going to download it now, open this up. And you can see I have my annotations here. I have my stamp, which is great. And I have my comments. So for this one, you can only see the first comment that I made. You can't see the one that I talked about phase two. And for this one, you can see that the tabs were honored. So just a couple things to keep in mind when using comments. I don't recommend formatting. Um, just have, just write it the way you would write it um, and only use one comment per comment bubble. So having a secondary comment like this, I wouldn't recommend. Um, the student would be able to see it in Blackboard, but if they choose to download the document, they won't be able to see all your comments. 
So just something to keep in mind when comments. Um, there's also a text box tool that you can use, um, and then there's uh, shapes as well. Um, there's also print and download, which I just did, and then uh, a search option. One other thing that I wanted to show you is let's say you have multiple people grading a document. So let's say I have Aisha here, she's my TA, I'm the instructor of the course, I'm just going to see what Aisha said um, and what she, uh, how she, what kind of feedback she provided. So I see her comment here, I see her drawing and I see her text box. So let's say I wanted to delete her text box. If I click on the text box and press D on my keyboard. Are you sure you want to read this annotation? Press OK. It looks like it went away, but it, it comes back up. So what ends up happening is any annotations or comments or, or anything that have that has been done to the document that is by a different user, you do not have access to deleting them. The instructor also doesn't have access to deleting them. So sometimes you'll you might get an email from your professor of them saying like, oh, hey, like I saw you make this comment. I was wondering if you can actually edit it and say this instead type of thing. Um, that will happen because the instructor cannot edit your work. So you can even try using the eraser. And if I erase this and I unclick it, it looks like it went away, which is great. But once I refresh my screen and I scroll back down to that section, I'm gonna scroll, 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 it reappears. So just a couple things to keep in mind when having multiple people getting a document, there is no way to make change anyone else's um, annotations and the last thing is you can see the annotations um, a summary of all of the annotations using um, the menu so I can see if I click on the stamp it will take me right to the stamp so this is useful if you want to see and go through the annotations however it does not show you the comments so you can see here it shows me text boxes it doesn't show comments so if I scroll down you can see comments are within the document but they don't show it here. We're not too sure why, hopefully it comes with the update, but just something to keep in mind. So you've done all your annotations and you're happy with, with all your feedback. Now you have to provide a grade. So up here, I'm going to give them a nine out of 10. I thought that they did pretty well. You can provide feedback, like great work. And um, the students will be able to see this feedback. Um, you can add notes. So these notes here um, are private for only you and your grading team to see. So if you post this, the students are associated with this assignment who submitted this assignment will not be able to see what you wrote in this box. So I can say um, this team did well. And just let everybody know that they did well. Um, and I can even write down some issues that I saw potentially and I can press submit. So if I were to press submit, it disappears from my needs grading and it goes into my full grade center right here. So if I go to my full grade center, I have a few students in the course, if I scroll, and there is the grade posted right there. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and if you guys can all flip to assignment three, I'm just gonna open up the slides quickly here. There we go. Okay, if you can all go to activity 3A, grading and providing feedback on assignments, um, we'll give you about five minutes to complete it. It is 2.06 right now. So you guys can come back to 11, that would be great. And yeah, if you guys can get that done, um, you have about five minutes.
All right, everybody, it's 2.11 right now. Hopefully you had a chance to work on the exercise. If not, you can always uh, continue working on it after the session. So my name is Aisha, and I'm going to be going over uh, tests and how to grade them and the grade center for the last part of the workshop. So to start, um, I'd like to go over the testing life cycle. So to start off, it's to start off uh, the instructor will create the test, then they would deploy it and make it visible to students. Then the student would take the test, submit their work, and then you as a TA, GA, or an instructor uh, will grade the submissions. Then once that's complete, the instructor would post the grades and then the students will view them. So before we can start grading tests, we need to understand the different types of questions that are available within Blackboard. So Blackboard has 17 different types of questions. I'm not gonna go over all of them, but it's good to know that some of them are automatically graded, whereas others uh, require manual grading, like essay questions and short answer questions. And the instructor could add a rubric for those particular questions in order for you to uh, mark the student submission. As for mobile friendly questions, uh, some students uh, like using the Blackboard app and might choose to do their test using it. However, there's a limitation to the types of questions they can uh, submit answers for. So there are true and false, either or, multiple choice, short answer, and essay. If the test had other types of questions, it will prompt them to open uh, the test in a browser. And we usually recommend for students to use about a browser when it comes to submitting assignments and tests, just to avoid any issues with the app. And then for feedback, the instructor can set that up uh, for in the test settings, whether uh, the students would receive uh, feedback immediately after a test or after all attempts are graded. So now that we're a bit familiar with the types of questions that we'd be marking, we can get into the grading process. So there are two ways of grading. You can grade by question or grade by test. When it comes to grading by question, um, all the different uh, submissions for that particular question are compiled together and you can mark them. Or if you want to grade by test submission, uh, it would show you all the different uh, answers each student provided and you can just mark them one by one. And for some questions, you can have feedback for them. So like the short answer and the, um, the essay. If you did have a rubric, for example, you can give uh, feedback with it for that particular question, or you can give overall feedback for the whole test submission, just to let the student know uh, how they did. And it all depends on what the instructor would like you to do. So now I'm gonna demonstrate how to grade a test submission and provide feedback. Just one second for me to share my screen. Okay, so what you're seeing right now is a part of the Grade Center uh, for tests. So the way you can go there is you've probably already tried, uh, been to the needs grading or the full Grade Center. Under there, you can see two options here, assignments and tests. If I click on tests, it will filter all the different um, assessments that are only for tests. So whether it's been marked or not, it would all show within this page. So you can see here that I had two submissions for the sample test for students. So what I'm going to demonstrate is the different ways of marking. So the first one is grade questions. So that would be grading by question and grade attempts. I'll first demonstrate the grade questions. So you can see here there's a different questions for that particular um, test. And if an instructor told you to, for example, mark the short answer question, you would click on the number of responses to the right here and then you can mark each, uh, each student's answer. So if we go to the preview user here, we can click edit next to uh, the student's name here. Okay, and we can put in a score. So they I can see that the student has answered this correctly, so I can put one. And over here, you can add some feedback and say, well done, or maybe, let them know what the correct answer is or what they need to improve on. Then we click Submit. The other way, if I'll just go back to the test. 
would be to mark uh, by attempt. You can see here, if I say grade attempts, it will show me the first student's test submission. So this was already marked, but I'm just going to go over the different parts. So for multiple choice, it was automatically graded here. So you can see here. Uh, for the short answer, I, was, I gave some feedback regarding that. Uh, for the essay as well. OK, so if I scroll down over here, uh, you can see the feedback and notes section where you can give feedback uh, to the learner. And this is what the student can see. So you can say, well done, or maybe better luck next time. Any kind of feedback that you think uh, would help them improve in the future. Whereas the grading notes is for the grader and the, uh, and the instructor. So the student cannot see any notes written here. An example of this would be, uh, or example why you'd use it, would be to have some kind of note in regard to the student's submission, for example. Maybe you noticed uh, they were struggling on a particular question, or anything like that, you can put notes in here. And once you're done with that, you can say save and next to jump to the next submission or save and exit. So I'm just going to go save and next and it will show me the next student, uh, the next student's test submission. So I'm just going to go back to the presentation. Hi, everyone who's rejoined us. It looks like um, we were experiencing a little bit of a blip there. So if you're having issues connecting, it wasn't just you. All right, everyone, it's 2.21. Uh, so we're just gonna move on to the last section of the workshop. I hope uh, you were able to find yourself back here okay after the connection issue we had. Okay. 
So for the next part, I'd like to go over the Grade Center and how you would use it as um, a TA or GA. So from the previous exercises, if you've noticed, uh, the Grade Center has a collection of all the different kinds of assignments, uh, tests, journals, anything like that, uh, all in one place. So anything that requires submission, uh, whether it's been graded or not, uh, will be in here, just like in a grade book. So how would you use it? So the columns within the Grade Center are uh, can be automatically created if an instructor created an assignment, for example, within uh, a content area or a test, graded discussion board, or journal, or it can be manually created. So that would be for something that doesn't actually get submitted directly. For example, uh, if an instructor wanted uh, to have participation marks or for an oral, oral presentation. Calculated columns are used to um, have a total of different columns, say for example for different assignments. Uh, weighted total would be to put a weight or a percentage for uh, different columns, say assignments would weigh 25%, uh, the exam would be 50, anything like that uh, can be used using uh, the calculated columns. The next important thing within the Grade Center is to know uh, how to use uh, to know about the View Grade Details page. So that's accessible for both manual and automatically created columns, and it allows you to view the different attempts, uh, any kind of feedback that was given for that uh, particular submissions. Uh, you can clear and ignore attempts and view the grading history. So what I'm going to show you is how to add a column to the Grade Center and view the Grade Details page. Just give me one second to share my screen again. Okay, so now we're in the full Grade Center, you can see here uh, with all the different columns. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to create a column. So you can see here there's a button that says create a column, you can click on that. And got to give it a name to indicate what it's for. So I can call it, for example, uh, participation. And then we can add a description. So it can be like, for example, for attendance. These are optional, so but it's good to have a description just to know what the column is used for. Primary display will use score, and let's say points possible five. A rubric can also be added by the instructor, or uh, if they request for you to create one, you can always do that within here. Dates, uh, if it's a manual column, usually you don't really need one. So for now, I'm just gonna leave this empty. Uh, for options, do we wanna include this column in the Grade Center calculations? Yes. Uh, do I wanna show it to students? No, for now, because I'd like to put all the marks before students can view their grades. Uh, and I'll show you how to quickly do that within the Grade Center as well. Uh, show statistics, I'm just going to leave it as a default selection here. I'm going to click Submit. So if I go all the way to the right here, you can see the column participation. And you can see uh, a gray circle with the red line. This indicates that this column is hidden from students. In order to make it visible, we can just click the gray chevron over here and select Hide from Students again, and the icon will disappear. So now this uh, can be shown to students. And just another thing to show here before I go on to the grade details page, uh, grades can be modified within the Grade Center directly here. So say I want to change this three to a three and a half for any reason, I can just type it in, press enter, and then the mark has been modified. Okay, to go into the grade details page, uh, I'll go to the next to the submission itself, click the gray chevron, and click view grade details. Okay, you can see a note here that says original grade has been overridden. That's because of what I just did right now. Uh, it can also be overridden over here, which I'll go over in a second. Okay, so you can either revert, so put it back to the mark it was before, or exempt if I don't want to include it uh, within the total grade of the student. View attempts, if a student submitted multiple uh, submissions for this particular uh, assignment or test, then I can see all of them. And then you can see here, it would list all the different submissions. So here we can see view attempt again, so this is for this particular submission. And there's their attempt and ignore attempt. 
if a student emails you and said that they submitted the wrong assignment, for example, and like before the deadline, and they'd like you to clear it for them, please do not select clear attempt. That will delete the, uh, the student's work that they submitted and say if the student made a mistake and said, oh, I actually wanted that submission and not the one before it or something like that, there's no way to retrieve it. So always use ignore attempt once you've uh, contacted the instructor and they gave you the okay, uh, and this will allow them to resubmit their work. Within the manual override, this is where you can also change the grade. Uh, so you can do it directly in the grade center or from over here. You can give feedback to the learner just uh, like we saw earlier within the test um, attempt. So you can have it here as well and some grading notes as well. Column details, we just have some information uh, in regards to the column. And grade history just keeps track of the different grades that were given or uh, the actual submission. So keep um, a record in here. So yeah, so I'm just going to go back to the presentation and I'll hand it back to Ronak to wrap it up. Alrighty, so that is the end of our session. Um, a couple things before we let you go. There is a feedback form that Lauren just sent in the chat um, just a couple minutes ago, if you guys can fill that out. Um, a couple links to be aware of. So where to find support with Blackboard on campus. So you can always submit a ticket if you are ever um, confused about something or un unsure about how to use a specific tool or feature um, or need uh, a specific request. You can always create a ticket at uwindsor.ca forward slash BB Help. Um, we also have the virtual help desk, um, which we call BB Cafe. Um, you can always come visit us there. We always have the team there um, that you guys can just hop in. And there's the link posted. We are there today from, until, from now until 4. Um, but we should be back on Tuesday from 8.30, 8.30 to 4.30, subject to change. So we will definitely keep you guys updated on ours. You Windsor Blackboard uh, Wiki. So if you ever need help with resources and um, specific tools on Blackboard, you can always check out our Wiki. We have a bunch of different pages that are associated with um, Blackboard and different learning tools. Um, self-paced Blackboard courses. So using this link in the in the slide, you can um, register and self-enroll yourself into these courses and you can work on um, and practice uh, specific tools in Blackboard at your own pace. And if worse comes to worse, um, you still need help, you can always go to blackboard.com and uh, get support from them as well. So I just wanted to thank you all for joining us today. Um, I'm going to unmute your mics. So you please feel free to um, turn them on and ask questions or you can throw them in the chat. Um, but please remember to fill in the uh, feedback form. And thank you and we are open to questions.